Well, that's not good. Hello and welcome to Making a Home and you join me at my glorious temporary workstation which I've just set up here on a corner of this table. Pretty much the only flat surface I can find in the whole house at the moment. But the big news is we are in, we are in our house finally. This, <laughs> this day that we've been waiting for for so many months has finally happened and we are finally here. Admittedly, we are still just camping here, essentially. We're living surrounded by boxes, there's stuff everywhere, it's just absolute carnage. Um, but we're in, and now we can begin the slow and long process of turning this into the home that we want it to be. So, the move went pretty smoothly. Uh, the movers turned up on time, they were very professional, um, they came with a nice big van. Um, there were supposed to be two vans, but <laughs> the second van mysteriously didn't turn up because uh, apparently some people called in sick <laughs> after the uh, England-Scotland football game, which is kind of not surprising. But we made it work, we had to do two trips in the end, but the guys that did turn up were fabulous. They were really good, really professional, can't fault them at all. Really glad that we didn't try and do this ourselves, quite honestly. Um, it was extremely expensive. Um, the better part of a thousand pounds, which is an eye-watering amount of money to just move your stuff 20 minutes down the road. But having said that, um, it still took three men, three strong men, much stronger than me, <laughs> um, the better part of a day to move all of this, this stuff. So yeah, as much as I hate to see that amount of money just disappear in a puff of smoke, I think really it was the only way to go. Um, there were a couple of minor accidents. <laughs> um, Rach managed to drive the front of the car into a pillar um, just underneath our flat. And I managed to drive the back of the car <laughs> into the neighbor's car when I was trying to reverse into the garage. So now we have to pay for repairs on the neighbor's car as well. But actually, if those were the two worst things to happen out of an entire day, and we are now successfully in our house, yeah, it could have been worse, I think. So, as you saw in the last video, Rachel had already done the carpets upstairs. She did a really good job on them, but the carpets themselves are just way beyond any kind of repair, to be honest. So, yeah, they still look pretty terrible, but they look a lot better than they did. Um, so on Sunday I tackled the carpet in the lounge and actually uh, it came up relatively well. Um, it nearly killed me in the process. <laughs> I started at 9am on Sunday morning and I didn't finish until well past 6 o'clock, nearly 7 o'clock. And I was working on it constantly the entire day. Um, but the carpet did actually shine up quite nicely. Um, there are still a few issues, a few stains here and there, which there's nothing we can do about really. But actually, it looks alright, and um, yeah, I think we can live with it for a while until we get around to upgrading it. So on Sunday evening, after I finished the carpets, I then did a little uh, update, which I'm going to show you now. And that pretty much brings us up to speed on where things are at the moment. Um, we haven't really done much work uh, on the house at all because we've been spending all of our time back at the flat because um, we're busy painting and cleaning and just getting it ready to hand back to the estate agents. So we haven't had any time really to work on things here. Um, but once we've got that flat out of the way, then we can actually start focusing on fixing things here. But we have done a few small things, so I will show you this video now. Right, so after a very long and somewhat tiring weekend, we are actually now officially moved into the new house. As you can see, everything is rather a shambles at the moment. Um, I will show you the upstairs just now, but it's just as bad as this, if not worse. Uh, Rach has essentially unpacked the kitchen um, as best she can under the circumstances. Um, Still some work to be done here, but she's done a really amazing job cleaning up the hob, which has actually come up quite well um, with a bit of a scrub. Um, the oven is still completely filthy. I'm not even gonna open it because it just fills the house with the most awful stench. Um, so we're gonna need to get some really strong oven cleaner 
to sort that out. Um, I have fixed this drawer. Uh, basically just needed a new screw in the side. It was a pretty easy job. Um, I've also fixed the hole that was here. There was actually a piece of wood that fits in there. It had just fallen down. Um, I think it needs some sealing because it looks a bit weird, but it's in place at least. Um, the tap, excuse the washing up. Um, the tap now works. I don't know if I told you about that before, but basically there was no cold water. Um, there was hot water, but no cold water. And the reason was that it's very dark, so you probably can't see in there, but um, there's a valve in there, which is like a master valve for the cold water, which controls both the tap and also this uh, hookup for the washing machine. And basically what they've done is instead of just turning off the washing machine, because there is a valve for that, they just turned off the main valve instead. So there was now no water in the washing machine or the tap. And the problem with that was that I didn't realize that the valve for the washing machine was on. So as soon as I opened the main valve uh, to get the tap working, water started pouring out of this washing machine hookup <laughs> and completely flooded the floor. So that was a fun experience, but anyway, it's all working now. Rach has started cleaning these cupboards, but they are absolutely filthy. Um, you can still see some, it's a bit dark, but there is still some grime on the top there. Um, I don't think these have been cleaned at all, ever, since they were installed, which judging by the design, I would guess was maybe early 2000s, perhaps. So that is a very long time to not clean your kitchen. We still don't have a washing machine and this is a bit of an issue because um, to order a new washing machine takes at least 10 days for it to be delivered and neither of us really have the time to go and pick up a second hand one. So at the moment what we're doing is taking all of our clothes back to the flat and washing them there, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but at least we have a way of washing our clothes. So upstairs the carnage continues, there are boxes everywhere and it is rather a mess. Um, however, we have managed to put together our bed, which is great news, so we actually have somewhere to sleep. And Rach has done a really good job temporarily sorting out some kind of stuff in the bedroom so that we have access to clothes and things. So yeah, she was busy doing that while I was slaving away on the carpets. There are a couple of other small things that we've done. So this front door, as you might recall, was extremely loose. I've tightened all of that up. Uh, we've had more sets of keys cut, so we have plenty of keys. Although, a bit of a funny story on that is, let me just find the original key, which I think is this one. So if you ignore this bottom one, these are the keys that we were given, and we were rather stumped as to what this middle one was, because this one was the front door, this one is for the garage, but this one, we couldn't find any lock that fitted it until we took it to uh, Timson's to get more keys cut, and we asked him whether he might be able to identify what kind of a door it was from, and he pointed out that this is actually a copy of the front door key. <laughs> so I have no idea why we didn't try that, but as you can clearly see, they are the same key. So we actually had two front door keys all along and we've been busy sorting out all sorts of complicated arrangements with hiding keys under pot plants and things so that we could get into the house. <laughs> and it wasn't necessary, we could have had a key each. So in the garden, as you can see, we've pulled down a bit of this hedge here, um, basically just as an experiment to see how easy it was to take down. Thankfully it actually pulls off quite easily. Uh, we've since discovered that this is Virginia Creeper, um, which apparently is very pretty and uh, particularly in autumn it goes red and it looks rather nice. But the problem is in the UK it is a bit of a pest and as you can clearly see it's just smothering everything else in this garden at the moment and just taking over completely. So it will have to come out. Um, I definitely don't have the time to be cutting it back every f few weeks. So we will be taking that out at some point. Um, but yeah, at the moment the garden is a bit of a mess because we started just clearing it out just to see how difficult it was. And then finally, the last update is that we managed to get this door to lock. Um, well, first of all, I fixed this because it was all loose. 
But basically, this has a little push-in lock that you push up like that, and then the door is locked. So, yay, we can now lock the back door. We did have this um, kind of lock as well, which is like a barrel lock that goes in and then you can you can close it like that. But it's really difficult to get in because it doesn't align with the door properly. Um, so luckily we don't have to do that now anymore. We can just lock the door in the ordinary way. So that's the state of play at the moment. Plenty more to do, but we're getting there and we will gradually tick things off bit by bit. Oh my God. Uh, so Rach is having a shower and it's dripping down the wall here. Which is not good. It's dripping on our sofa actually. Shit, that's really not good at all. I've literally just realized that now. Um, I don't know how long that's been like that, but it doesn't look like that long based on the staining, but that is gonna need to get sorted out pretty quickly. Not good. And on that cliffhanger, we're gonna leave things for this episode. <laughs> Hopefully that is nothing too serious, but I have a feeling I know what the problem might be, and if so, should be a fairly easy fix. But we'll discuss all that in more detail in the next one. So stick around for that, and in the meantime, stay well. See you soon.